Hello. What I'm going to be doing is showing you how to calibrate a microscope using a stage micrometer. Now this is a far less difficult task than you first might imagine and it doesn't require any adjustments to be made of the microscope. What we'll be doing is confirming the measurements taken with the microscope are true and correct by comparing them to a stage micrometer. Now that's just really a small ruler of a known length. In our example, we'll be using a reticule scale which is 10 millimeters long in 100 divisions. And this will be mounted in the eyepiece of our microscope. We will then discuss how these measurements taken with the reticule scale are affected by different magnification settings and then introduce a stage micrometer to check and verify those measurements. And then finally, take this calibrated measurement information and use it to calculate the real size of a subject or sample. But first of all, let's take a closer look at our microscope measurement instrument. For the sake of explanation, let us simplify this microscope to its primary components. Here we can see a representation of one optical path from the subject stage to the eyepiece. In the microscope head assembly, there is a prism arrangement to angle the light path into the eyepieces. If we remove this prism and straighten out the tube, we have reduced the microscope to its simplest form, a straight tube with objective lens at one end and eyepiece at the other. In principle, just like Robert Hooke's 17th century instrument. Let's take a look through our microscope and employ the services of a spider as our subject. With the times 4 objective, we can clearly see our eight-legged subject magnified in the eyepiece view. As with most compound microscopes, we can replace objectives, normally on a rotating turret, to select different magnifications. So we will replace the times 4 objective with a times 10 objective. As expected, the image of the spider has increased in size using a higher magnification. So let's revert back to our times 4 objective and introduce a scale reticule into the eyepiece. Now in the real world, fitting an eyepiece reticule is a little harder than this. We have another video on how to fit a reticule, a link to which can be found below. So let's bring on the spider again. As you can see, the body of the spider falls between the 40 and the 60 unit marks on the reticule scale. So the spider width is around 20 units. Let's increase the magnification by replacing the times 4 objective with the times 10. As expected, the spider appears much larger but the reticle scale remains the same. The spider has not really grown any larger, but if measured with this reticle scale, it appears now to be much more than 20 units across. This shows that the reticle scale divisions must measure different amounts depending on which magnification is selected. So we must find out what actual size the reticle is measuring at each magnification and how we can be sure that the measurement is accurate. Okay, to reveal the calibration of our eyepiece reticule and watch each of these 100 divisions is measuring, we need to compare the scale to another scale of a known length. Now, to this end, we use a stage micrometer. A stage micrometer is about the same size as a standard microscope slide, but it holds a small, precision, fine lined scale image. Now this small scale is magnified by the microscope in exactly the same manner as any sample or subject. Now I have some examples here. In this professional stage micrometer we have the pattern on a glass disc which is mounted in the centre of a stainless steel carrier. This stainless steel carrier has an embossed serial number which is unique and it comes in a smart wooden box. This is uh, an ideal item for certification as an internationally traceable calibration artifact. Now certification is something we'll be covering briefly a little later on. In this case the same pattern is held on a glass disc in the centre of a black aluminium carrier. Now this glass disc and metal construction lends the stage micrometer durability that an all glass construction may otherwise lack. Uh, an all glass slide being more prone to being accidentally dropped or damaged. Now stage micrometers come in many different division sizes and division sizes and lengths and you should choose a scale that most 
most matches the scale of your reticule and the objective magnification that you're using. Now to calibrate a microscope fully, you should carry out the following procedure for each of the objectives or magnifications available to you. Or you could just limit this calibration to the magnification you are using in your measurement procedure. Now, in our example, we'll be using the times 10 objective and the same eyepiece reticle you saw earlier, which is the uh, 10 millimeters in 100 divisions. So we'll be selecting a stage micrometer with a one millimeter scale length. Now this will mean that once magnified, it will be the best match to the 10 millimeter long reticule, as you will observe. Now, all we need to do is put the stage micrometer onto the microscope in a normal manner, select the objective that we need to have calibrated, and then find and focus on the actual scale image. Some uh, stage micrometers have a ring or a target around the outside of the small scale to make it easier to locate. In this video, the stage micrometer scale can be seen moving as we adjust its position on the microscope stage. You will note that the 1mm long micrometer scale is almost the perfect match for the 10mm long reticle scale uh, as it's magnified by the 10 times objective. We need to align the scales one over the other and adjust the position so that the zero lines on the left hand side are correctly lined up. We can see the reticle scale indicated blue at the top and the micrometer scale indicated red at the bottom. You will notice that the zero lines are aligned. However, if we look at the bottom stage micrometer scale, it finishes here, while the reticle scale is a little longer. So there is a mismatch or a calibration error at this point. Let's take a look, closer look at this. Now, if we separate the two scales, the bottom black scale is a stage micrometer. Now we know this is one millimeter long. It has 100 divisions, each of 10 microns. Therefore, 100 divisions is one millimeter, half that, that's 50 divisions, is half a millimeter. The reticle scale in comparison, again, has 100 divisions, but as we have seen, the actual measurement size of each division is dependent on the selected magnification. Now, in our example, we're using a times 10 objective and a 10 millimeter reticule. At this magnification, the one millimeter stage micrometer appears 10 times larger. So, the one millimeter micrometer scale should match the 10 millimeter reticular scale exactly. So if we bring them both together, we can see that in general they do match. However, there is a small error evident towards one end. Let's take a closer look at this error. Now you can see that the stage micrometer one millimeter scale actually matches 99 reticle units or divisions. This means the 99 reticle units is equivalent to one millimeter in length. So for this objective, the size measured by each reticle division or unit can be calculated as one millimeter divided by 99. So each reticle division at this magnification is equivalent to 10.1 microns. So it's 10.1 microns per division. Let's take what we've reviewed and use it in a practical example. As before, we will use the times 10 objective and the 100 division scale the same scale and objective we previously calibrated. Using this zooplankton as a sample, we will measure the width of the body. During calibration, we proved that each reticle division is equivalent to 10.1 microns while using the times 10 objective. The body width is 35 reticle divisions. Each division is 10.1 microns or 0.0101 millimeters. So we can calculate the body width as 35 times 0.0101 millimeters, which equals 0.3535 millimeters, or a little over 350 microns. There are many models of stage micrometer with different scale lengths and patterns that you can choose from. In fact, there is a huge range of calibration equipment available. Uh, long glass scales up to a meter long in some instances, glasses with chrome images, just a few microns in size. Now, be they standard products available off the shelf or something that has been manufactured specially to meet your particular measurement requirement, they all have one purpose in common. And that is the requirement to confirm the confidence of your measurement method or system. To this end, 
the scales and the lines must be manufactured to a very high standard with great precision and accuracy and fine high definition lines. If a scale is to be magnified greatly, these lines can be as little as one micron in width. These products provide the high accuracy references that you require for the calibration of your measurements. So if you're going to use a stage micrometer to check your measurements, how do you know that the stage micrometer is correct? Well, this is where internationally traceable calibration certificates come into play. In some cases, they are a must have for meeting ISO or quality standards. Every stage micrometer can be individually verified and measured and a set of results produced which show any deviation from the nominal length. These measurements should be carried out by a laboratory that is approved to the ISO 17025 standard and they will issue a certificate in the name of their approving body, such as UCAS, NIST, DKD. Now, this is a typical calibration certificate. You will notice that there's the UCAS symbol with the number of the laboratory underneath. The artifact being calibrated has serial number and that is reported here. And here is the recalibration date for that artifact. Um, there's also a table of results.